Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Hey, it's Jeremy Corey from Voltron, and you're listening to Otaku Generation. And now, back to Voltron, defender of the universe. What's Reesh? What's Bank? Well, you know who to bank. It's Ellen and the boys. So let's all the yakking never gets old. It rocks me to my gut hole. They bring all the otaku to the yard. Otaku generation, they rock hard. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Otaku generation show. Welcome to show 905. Hi, hello, everyone. I am Alan. And I am Paul. Yep, and it's just the two of us. So we're gonna we're gonna jump right into um, the seasonal impressions, reviews, whatever you want to call it. Um, that being said, uh, why don't we start with the first one, Paul? What do we got? We got do it yourself. Do it yourself. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> what do we want to talk about here? No, we don't want to talk about it. But I suppose we got to just to give the listeners what they paid for. Uh, wait a second. I, th- I think I've detected a, a problem here with this uh, this equation, Alan. OK, so yep, do it yourself is so it's a girls doing things show. And on a scale, uh, which I always use for these shows of girls not actually doing anything, uh, just sort of mooching around to girls actually kind of doing some stuff. This one actually um is on the girls kind of do some stuff end of things. Uh, and this is in the uh, painfully didactic subcategory. So yes, did you know that you can construct a shelf with simple household items like pieces of wood and screws? If you did not, this show may blow your mind. <laughs> uh, so what we have is an utterly intolerable space cadet of a main character who is extremely poorly animated as she just kind of you know bumps her way through the world getting into hilarious accidents eating pork which traumatizes her pet pig who spends the entire episode sort of cowering in terror under the table while she eats pork which i think is meant to be amusing in some way and yes, so she you know doesn't get into the good school her her neighbor friend does. So she's at like a vocational school. And yeah, um, she ends up in a club, which is not a carpentry club, as she originally thinks, but a do-it-yourself club with a scary senior. And this show is just so leadenly uh painful as it stomps its way through this very 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 basic premise uh the just the the sheer incompetence or at least sketchiness of the animation makes this extra bad to to watch the voice acting is is tiresome um uh, yeah, I mean, there's nothing to recommend this show. I mean, it, it's not it's not the worst thing. It was not as horrible as some of the other things we're going to be talking about. Uh, but yes, it is going to be uh, five girls, maybe six, maybe seven. It's hard to tell from the credits who are making things. Yep. And we're going to have lots of humor where one of them injures herself and, you know, messes things up while she tries to make things. So, um, yeah, I mean, not a lot else to say about this. I mean, there's one thing to say is that if you want to do yourself a favor, don't watch it. But if you want to ignore us, oglink.com slash 6FV. Okay, so I guess we move on then. Yeah. And 
we move on to the eminence in shadow and i think what we need to say about the eminence in shadow is that you it would be much better to watch do it yourself than this show mm -hmm. um it's on high dive and uh yeah. and uh, uh i mean it, it 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 falls within the algorithm for me which is if it's on high dive it's it's likely not great for me now, they've been getting a few better things lately uh but this is not one of them mm-hmm so, but what do we have? So what we have is what seems to be a high school anime. We have a uh, a princess type rich girl uh, who has flashbacks as she tries to go to school. There's uh, some asshole boy who she's kind of obsessed with because he doesn't pay any attention to her. And it turns out that he is just like a stone cold psychotic murderer. He's want always wanted to be a hero, and his idea of being a hero is like repeatedly, you know, bashing thugs' heads with crowbars. He loves his crowbars. I mean, he really loves his crowbars. He thinks that like crowbars are the answers to all of life's problems, as well as the best weapon ever invented, and, which he explains in great detail as he is, uh, you know, sort of uh, just brutalizing a, a few Yakuza thugs uh, who have kidnapped uh, Hime-sama. And I can't tell exactly what the fuck is going on with this, except I think this is like a very elliptical sort of isekai. Uh, as near as I can tell, this first... So he's always wanted to be a hero, except like if there's a nuclear war, he'd die. And like, that sucks. He wants ultimate power. Uh, but he gets like hit by, a, you know, the, the requisite truck at the end of the episode. And as near as I can tell, sorry if this is a spoiler, people, uh, but he is going to be in another world where his just like pure psychosis, his love of just like bashing somebody's head with a crowbar and bashing and bashing and bashing and keeping doing that while they twitch is going to be a useful life skill. Well, it's apparently not, and it's also <laughs> apparently not good in anime format. Uh, so it was a it was a painful watch. I mean, again, not the worst episode of this uh, of this week's discussion. Oh, Paul, you're but, just setting that up for everyone. Oh man, you know this is this 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 week was a journey, I tell you. And we are not yet at the bottom of this journey, but we shall leave the bloody. Uh, twitching corpse of this show as we move on to the next one. But 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 Alan, what where can viewers find this bloodied corpse? As mentioned before, high dive oglink.com slash six FW. Radio. Okay. What do we got? Uh, okay. What we have next is the latest entry in the Mobile Suit Gundam franchise. Now, there have been a fucking lot of these. I mean, we're well over a dozen different Gundam shows at this point. Uh, 15, 16, somewhere in there. Anyway, so what we have is Kido Senshi Gundamu Suisei no Majo. Mobile Suit Gundam, the Witch from Mercury. And, and there's a shocker, folks. This one has a girl as the primary protagonist. And like, if you know anything about Gundam, that just like don't happen, man. It was good to see some Gundam. Ah, and so, so, so this actually, I think is, um, I probably for me, the highlight of this week. Uh, it, it's fairly good. So this is basically, and I have not looked online to verify this, but I'm sure that it's everywhere. This is basically uh, Revolutionary Girl Lutena the Gundam. Uh, it is exactly that. There is a school. Uh, there is a girl at this school. And, you know, if you win the fights, you are king of the school. And... The girl whose father owns like some mega corporation is your bride. And it doesn't matter if you're male or female or whatever. You know, if you're from the, the sticks like Mercury, like a protagonist, you might find this kind of weird. But we, the viewers, of course, do that. Um, 
yeah so so the the first is the setup for uh this first episode is the setup for the show apparently there was a prologue as well which has more backstory i have not watched that i will go back and watch that because i actually rather like this um we have uh a girl from mercury as as you would guess from the title uh she has a super awesome gundam it is like totally out of spec from what anybody else has seen. She considers it a member of her family. And a lot of the episode is sort of establishing, you know, the 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 uh, the Kakigurui sort of this ru school is ruled by combat. If there is any disagreement, no matter how how minor between students, you know, you got to get into your your giant robots and fight it out. And we get, see that the uh, the guy who's currently the top dog at school is a real jerk, and he gets a lot of screen time to show just how much of a jerk he is. And so when we get to the climactic battle of this first episode, you are really hoping for him to go down. And, you know, this kind of works. Um, the, the, the characters are, come across reasonably well in this first episode. I mean, there's not a lot of depth here. Uh, we've got our setup. Uh, the Gundam looks pretty good. I enjoyed watching the fights. Uh, animation was really solid, but also not just the animation, it's the direction that makes the fights interesting to watch. Uh, I assume that we might be getting some sort of broader war uh, that's going to sort of force all of these students who are currently at each other's throats to, you know, have to fight together. But we shall see. Uh, I'm I'm actually probably going to watch this one is what I'm thinking at the moment. Okay. Uh, if you also want to watch this, it's on Crunchyroll, oglink.com slash 6FX. Uh, uh, okay, so we have Human Bagu Daigaku, or The Human Crazy University. And I, this show I, has many things that distinguish it. I mean, one of them, the, perhaps the least of them, is the, you know, the the bafflingly unpleasant incompetence of its animation uh though once i you know looked this one up after watching it i realized it was animated by my nemesis dle oh <laughs> my i hate them so much and this show has more than reconfirmed my prejudices against dle so uh, this show is one weird piece of shit. And I, I add real emphasis on the shit here. So we have a main character, a very badly animated salary man, maybe, uh, who is on death row because he is a murderer. He just like offed his wife and her lover and set the house on fire. But now he's a nice guy who likes re likes reading novels. And, you know, like most of this episode is just like this, this very sort of neutral animation of his time on death row. And we get these, you know, informative infographics of, you know, here's the places where people get executed in Japan and here's how we do it. It. And, you know, you get a couple of security guards or, you know, uh, uh, workers there who are talking about, oh, yeah, you know, this is kind of rough. But, you know, this is our part in the justice system. And it seems like this show is setting up for something, but it just doesn't get there for uh, it. It's it's just a very weird thing. It's it's deeply unpleasant, but in this sort of very neutral, bland way. And it goes on in exactly this form. There's a twist. I guess I won't spoil the twist or something. I mean, I guess somebody might watch this. Anyway, regardless, uh, the last like third or quarter of the show, it's we, we discover that our protagonist has like some really weird things going on with him. But it's just it, it doesn't make any sense. There is nothing in this episode that makes sense either in world or like why you would animate this as a story. I have no idea what they're trying to do here. 
uh, we get like all these sort of exotic details about here's ways that, you know, people almost died, but didn't. Uh, so I assume this is going to be a show about fucking with the protagonist uh, and just having lots of weird stuff. But in this, you know, really crappily animated DLE style where you have just these stiff drawings of people like bobbing around the screen with their mouths flapping. So <clears throat> uh, I this is weird, but not in any good way. I mean, I like weird stuff, but this does not deliver. This show does not deliver on any level. Yeah, I uh, I don't get the point of this show. Um, I had another phrasing for it, but uh, nonetheless, I, I, I wouldn't recommend watching this. It's a waste of your time. Um, it's available on Crunchyroll, uh, oglink.com slash 6FY. You can figure out what the initial <laughs> what F and Y stand for, because that, I think, is how they feel about the audience. All righty. So moving along, we have Shinmai Renkin Jutsushi no Tenpo Kei, or Management of Novice Alchemist. I guess so. We couldn't afford an indefinite article in the English translation of that title there for some reason. Yeah, so um, you would think from watching this that this is a crappy adaptation of a video game. Uh, for example, one of the long-running Atelier series of Alchemist um, games, where you have a cute girl protagonist who makes lots of potions and sells them. Uh, but no, that is not what this is. This is a light novel, uh, presumably written by somebody who really likes the Atelier games, about a young girl who has been orphaned. Uh, her parents were, in fact, alchemists, but she was, uh, but they were off by bandits, and she was, as I said, like, had a horrible childhood. She's done nothing but study. And this first episode is basically a fast forward. Uh, exposition of her time at alchemist school where she does nothing but study makes no friends but gets a good mentor and uh it's very hard to engage with i mean it looks fine um it's okay as far as the premise goes it's not a fucking isekai so it's got that going <laughs> for it uh it, it's um i i don't know it, it's got a very there's there's no actual drama to this but it is nonetheless better than almost any isekai uh, our main character you know is clearly going to be a very good alchemist but she's going to have some you know struggles to get there uh the uh challenges she faces while trying to to pass her alchemist exam and apparently for the five years at alchemist school if you fail any exam even once you are out uh, unless apparently you're a noble because they're just skating through uh there's some weird sort of commentary that doesn't actually seem to be social commentary or criticism it's just like oh yeah this is how the world is that's all cool um and like this that's that's more or less what this show is um this is setting up our our young protagonist uh Sabasa, who is going to be um uh, you know running an alchemist shop way the hell out in the sticks and we can tell from the opening credits and closing credits that she's going to have a lot of cute other girls helping her out and I think that's probably what we're going to get from this series. Uh, from a music perspective, the incidental music is of the extremely obtrusive, um, just, hey, here's some wacky music school. And I could really have done with less of that. But other than that, this was perfectly fine. If you're interested, it's on High Dive, ogling.com slash 6FZ. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have one more full length show and then we have a short. So, what do we have yep. for the full length? Okay. Coming up next, we've got uh, Shinobi no Itoki. Okay. So, this you know, starts off looking like just a, just a school anime of sorts. You've got a guy. Uh, oh, man. Uh, 
actually, do you remember anything of the action that happens in this? I remember the second half. This was like the first one I watched way back at the start of the week. I I don't. I I should have <laughs> because there's so much going on. I was squeezing this in on Saturday. We're recording on a Saturday because I'm going to tear the studio down real soon. Blanking on this. <laughs> okay. Completely. So I so like I didn't hate this, right? So you've got so the the idea is you have a fish out of water. Uh, I'm going to spoil this. Like if if this is first episode shit, right? This is the kind of thing you get in a series summary so like whatever yeah so our our main character is uh turn is he is the the head of the neck of the Iga ninja clan but nobody has ever like bothered to tell him this uh for no apparent reason i so apparently you know everybody else who lives around him has been raged from you know the moment they were born to become ninja except this guy uh and so when he is attacked by the rival ninja clan uh he's like wow this is weird i am a complete incompetent doofus and his uh his childhood friend who stalks him uh following him home from school every day turns out to be of course a super awesome ninja uh, who fight the other super awesome ninjas and it turns out his mother is the current leader of the group who is sort of keeping the seat warm for him and like why has she never told him that he's the next leader of the clan like this is the problem with this show i get they're trying to do this fish out of water thing the you know the, the person drawn into a magical world yeah he's just an ordinary doof but no, he's going to be the best ninja ever. But it just doesn't fit with the world that they've established. The ninja are pretty tech savvy. You know, they've all got, you know, special headgear and equipment and drive cars. So this is this is it's very much a a modern show. Uh I mean, the action was fine. I it, so as I said, I didn't hate this, right? So the uh, if you give it its premise, uh, you know, the fact that you know it's super dumb that this guy was never told, but but you know the the the, the big conflict of this is he gets a love letter in his locker, but it turns out that the person who confesses to him, uh, his underclassman at the school, you know, takes off her clothes, and he's like. Uh, I'm not comfortable with this. And, and she's like, oh, well, you are so clever to not fall for this because I am an enemy from the opposing clan. I am going to murder the fuck out of you along with these other dozen ninja. So, I mean, you know, it's it's dumb as hell, but I didn't mind it. I mean, it was it was fine. If you want to see it, uh, oglink.com slash 6G0 um, available on Crunchyroll. Mm, yeah, but I, I mean, it's, it's not that good. I mean, I I don't hate it, but I don't recommend you. Watch I, I don't it really. remember it, so you can see what kind of impression it's leaving <laughs> on me. Um, but anyhow, okay, so that that's that concludes the the full length show. So we have one short, um, which we've we've seen this sort of reboot before. Um, well, so yeah, this is a spinoff of the very, 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 very long-running Detective Conan, uh, Meitante Conan series. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, inspired by the opening credits uh, sequence, uh, where in every episode you have a mysterious shadowy figure representing the, the, the forces of criminality that Detective Conan must hunt down and uh, end defeat but in this case the personification becomes the main character they are the murderer hanazawa and they are going to go to the uh uh the, the baddest city ever uh that is known for its criminality so so he can just criminal shit up and the 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 fundamental this is a gag show more or less where it's like the, the you know, Hanazawa it goes and is going to I'm going to do crimes but is you know phased by everyday uh, challenges like bureaucracy and trying to find an apartment and flips back and forth between I am the baddest criminal ever and man this room is creepy because there were crimes committed here oh what well this is crime city therefore. Every room has had a crime committed in it. 
Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's. I, I yeah, was a ahead. fan of the original, but I just don't. And yeah, I know this is a short, but I just don't get what they're doing here. Um, and I just kind of don't like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, if I'm just being blood, I don't feel like it's it's really engaging in the creativity. I mean, yes, okay, this is this is sort of a Japanese Sherlock, um, or at least the the original series was. But at least it had something going on with it. And here, I just don't feel like I just don't feel engaged by this short at all. Um, it also felt I know it was only like eight minutes long, but it felt really long to me. Um, yeah, so I mean, the, it's it's meant to be humorous, right? So this is a a funny riff on Detective Conan, uh, which is not the straightest show ever, but whatever. And it just the humor doesn't really land. I'd say it it doesn't quite commit to any of its angles, and yeah, it just doesn't quite work. Mm-hmm. I think I think at a fundamental level. Um, so it was, you know, a novelty, but I can't in good conscience recommend anybody watch it. Yeah, nor can I, but I will give you a link anyways. OGLink.com slash 6G2 um, available on Netflix. And, you know, I'm in the U.S. So when I went there, um, it didn't uh, did not did not give me anything. It just sort of cycled me into Netflix. So um, maybe it's a working link. Maybe it's a, a link to come. Um, but I do trust the source of that. That will be the link. So, yeah. Um, okay. I, don't, I don't think we have anything more, at least for this show. Um, we we have a, another set of about the same number coming. Um, and then we'll we'll sort of go through that. And that will, I guess, for the most part, conclude our rapid cycle through the um, season impressions. We may or may not in tomorrow's recording have a mat so i, I can't uh, can't predict that um and um this show and obviously tomorrow's show um or tomorrow for our recording but next week's show will be the should be in theory the last show i record into this space so um you know in 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 two shows from now i guess you'll you'll get to hear what the new acoustical yeah. situation sounds like in the new place so yeah. So I hate to break it to you, Alan, but we've but after uh, when we rec- we record tomorrow, there's going to be enough shows for yet another impression. Oh, really? Well, okay. Well, yep. then I guess we're and not. And then it's even talking continuations because yeah. we have some in- interesting continuations coming up. Uh, that that a couple I've been looking forward to, including the new season of uh, Welcome to Demon School or Ar- Rumakun. Uh, there was there's something else that uh, we have, you know, the you know spy family continuing. Oh, okay, so so maybe yeah, okay, so that might be qualified and interesting. You you say that, and the first thought I thought is like, no, that's a really that's interesting continuation. That's an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah. Now there, there's there, there's some, so we might do another one after that, uh, depending on how things are going. Uh, okay. Talk about some of the more interesting ones, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we're keeping it short because yeah, we got another recording coming up in real short order here. Yeah, and uh, and I I still have a lot of stuff to do um, tonight. And I, look, I'm making progress, but it's just not enough. I still have a house full of stuff that I can't move it anywhere yet. Um, that I think that's my biggest frustrating part. <laughs> of, like I can't sort of start to clear out the space and then make some phone calls and say, "Go take that big thing and trash it." You know, so I, I, yeah, soon, soon, real soon, but not, not yet. That not being quite. said, um, let's close the show up. Uh, so for all the things we've mentioned, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net or ognetworks.tv. We do make other shows. You can check all of that out. Uh, you want to come in and hang out with us in Discord or leave feedback, oglink.com slash Discord. We do have a feedback channel in there. Um, You want to be a supporter, help us pay for things. uh, OGLink.com slash support or Patreon or patron. Uh, Okay. I I did add, Paul knows the uh, aforementioned fortune, which I don't know when we'll get to it, but I... I, uh, I, I, I stuck four more fortunes in the uh, in the cup, and one of them is really just seriously, really. I took a picture of it, so we'll we'll see how long it takes to get there. Okay, this one is long. 
this is the thing that I thought that I just took a picture of uh, uh, this, this, you know, recently. Okay, here you go. Here's the lame, not a fortune. I'm just going to tell you what's going on here. Come back later. I am sleeping. Yes, cookies need their sleep too. Mm. <laughs> it did so, not take long for us to get to this one. And I did. I, know, I, sh- I, I shuffled to... around and with my hand for a moment. Oh, boy. Okay. So, I I mean, this, so at this point, we have something that is not even attempting to be a fortune. Uh, But as far as sort of humor, I would put it, I put it above the level of human bug daigaku, uh, but uh, probably below the culprit Hanazawa. Well, there you go. There's the mystery. Uh, It it didn't take us long at all. (laughs) This is the first (laughs) fortune I pulled out. So uh, At least the pain was over fast. Yeah, yeah, no waiting period. It would have been good. People would have taken bets. Uh, I wish I, th- I tossed you know the original photo from uh, two couple days ago into Discord, but nonetheless, only Paul saw it. Please stay home. Please stay safe. Please stay healthy. And if you got to go out, please wear a mask. And until next week, for you guys at least, have a good one.